The Big Bang Theory series finale is tomorrow night right here on CTV. Over my text correspondence with ben the longest running live action sitcom in TV history wraps up after 12 seasons, 279 episodes, 52 Emmy nominations, and 10 wins, and an incredibly catchy theme song written by a Canadian music legend. Joining us now to talk more about just how he did it is the Big Bang Theory's Canadian connection, Ed Robertson. Welcome, sir. Good to see you again, Ben. I'm very glad to see you here. Uh, okay, so you've written a theme song for one of the most popular television shows in TV history. Uh, it's a rapid fire, for the, for the five people out there who haven't heard it, <laughs> it's a rapid fire sort of history of the world. How did you come up with it? Um, I actually wasn't going to write it at all, so I, I always credit my wife with yeah. being involved with this show because I, I had ignored um, the thing altogether. And I happened to say to my wife, we were up at the cottage, I was a little burnt out from a lot of touring. I said, ah, I'm supposed to have this conference call today, but I didn't write the song, so <laughs> I'm probably just going to ditch it. And she yeah. said, oh, what's it for? And I said, that's this guy Chuck Lore. And she said, Chuck Lorre? Yeah. <laughs> I said, yeah. And she said, Google him. Yeah. So I did, got in the shower, wrote it in the shower. I actually called my wife in and said, can you write this down? I had like lather in my face. She wrote it down, I recorded it in my bathing suit and sent it 10 minutes before the conference call. Chuck Lorre and Bill Prady got on the phone and said, we love it, awesome. That was it, no notes. No notes, they, actually, one note. He said, at the end when you go, it all started with a big bang, bang, it all started with a big bang, can we lose the tag and just say it once? Just I said, yep. Once, yeah. He goes, yeah, we're done. And that was, <laughs> that was it. <laughs> oh, but, okay, correct me if I'm wrong, but if you take a step back from that, there was actually someone from the show was in the audience when you were doing a freestyle rap about the history of the world? Well, that's how the relationship started, actually. But I had sort of, in the haze of touring, forgotten that part at the time. Uh, I had... Uh, I mean, that's a coincidence. Uh, total serendipity. All co yeah, coincidence. Total serendipity. I read a book by Simon Singh called Big Bang, Everything You Need to Know About Mankind's Most Important Discovery. Fantastic book. It's like a layman's read on every mathematical and scientific discovery sure. required to understand cosmological theory. So uh, our band does a lot of improv and spontaneous music, and I made up a song that night about cosmological theory, and Chuck Lorre and Bill Prady were in the audience. That's, that's so that was the germ. <laughs> and they said, oh, this guy might have... But you, you've been burned before, right? Many times. On, and, on writing theme songs. That's why I didn't pursue this song. I, you know, I wrote a song for Shrek 2. Wasn't in the movie. I wrote a song for Curious George. Wasn't in the movie. I wrote a song for, like, tons of television shows that never saw the light of day. So after 18 months of straight touring on Stunt and Maroon, yeah. we were like all over the world and it was crazy. I just needed a break. Yeah. But you know what I love about this song is, and I, and I asked you this once, I couldn't tell whether it was something you wrote for the Big Bang Theory or whether it was a Bare Naked Lady song that had been co-opted by the show. It was very true to what I feel is sort of the band's ethos. Um, what's the, you play a live version of it in your shows. What's the reaction by fans in the audience? It, uh, I don't think it ever occurred to us that this would become a staple of our live show. Um, but it, it's a hit now. Yeah. Like, yeah. So it's one of those songs that we play every time yeah. we play. So we play One Week Pinch Me, If I Had a Million Dollars, and the Big Bang Theory theme <laughs> every time we That's play. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you, as you described it, you know, you got out of the shower and you recorded on your computer. Has the songwriting process changed for you over the years? It has. Yeah. Um, I mean, you grow as a writer, you learn new things, new tricks, new, you get comfortable with it. The, the hardest thing about writing a song is everything outside of writing a song. And when you first start writing songs, it's the greatest thing in the world because you've just started making music with people you're writing songs, it's exciting, and you have no concept that there's anything outside of that. Then, if you're super lucky, you get a hit. And then all the pressure starts right. coming. Sure. And you're like, I don't have to write a song. I have to write a hit. Yeah. And I have to write a follow-up hit. Yeah. And then I have to write a whole record of these things. That's what people are expecting from you. Yeah, so all this pressure uh, really messes with your head. And, and for me, it, it, it wasn't as much the pressure to have a chart number or a hit single. It was like, we have 
50 crew people that work for us now. They're like, I'm feeding their families. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so yeah. that pressure really mounts. Yeah. Um, we're just really lucky. We've had a, a, a lot of success, a lot of hits, and I think out the other side of that, I'm back to where I can just write for fun. Well, I, I love uh, chatting with you anytime you've got something to talk about, and the fact that we're here talking about sort of Bare Naked Ladies and, and you having a, a, a signpost in the history of television I know. is a real accomplishment. So congratulations to you. Uh, thank your wife for us. I will. Uh, we appreciate it. I do every day. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thanks so much. Come back soon. Yeah, thanks, All right. Ben. All the best. Cheers. And tomorrow, eTalk has a special look at the success of The Big Bang Theory at 7.30 Eastern. And, of course, the series finale of The Incredible Show starts right after that.